Hello, it's John. Good to see you today. Uh, I'm going to start a little playlist for what is probably my favorite Taiji posture. And by posture, I mean actually like individual sort of move. If someone were to say you can only play one sort of martial arts posture sort of thing, just one thing out of all that, what would you do? It would be this posture. And it is Grass Bird's Tail or Grass of Sparrow's Tail from Yang style Tai Chi Chuan. Um, I, if someone said I can only do one thing, period, at all, ever, including the sitting meditation, ever, it would be the standing, sort of holding the trees on Zong posture. And I mention that only uh, because there would be some tie ins and similarities, especially when we're talking about the Peng Jing, the ward off energy. Uh, in uh, Taiji, which is sort of the keystone energy. You know, they say that, uh, and I've read this and heard this from people talking, that once you can understand Peng, the other of the seven energies uh, will kind of start falling into place. There's also the Liu energy, the roll back energy. This is yielding and redirecting. I consider this then, therefore, the sort of poster child for Taiji. So we have Peng and Liu are both within this grass bird's tail. What's cool thing about that, especially in that hypothetical situation of you can only do one posture, that's it, is that grass sparrow's tail, grass bird's tail, incorporates basically four movements. And as uh, Bruce Kumar Francis calls it, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not that, but as in, I, got, I have some of my uh, research reading materials here. In the Taiji classics, they call those four, the Peng Lu Jian, the cardinal directions. So this is the north, south, east, west, the, the, the four energies that all the other four and everything else is based out of. Uh, I've done, I'm going to review some of the stuff I've already done in other videos, talking about some of the eight energies, talking about stepping, uh, and things like that. So some of the, I have other stuff in other videos that might help fill in uh, there, uh, as well as just going to add it in here as well, just to make it more of a complete sort of thing. So with Grass Bird's Tail and Peng Lu Jian, so Peng Lu Jian, Bruce Kumar Francis, as I was saying, actually refers to uh, Ward Off, which is the Peng, as being lifting and expansive. So it kind of has that inflating sort of thing. So again, we're talking about this. We're keeping it inflated. We're, we're keeping the center line of our body safe. And we're turning it on the, with the Dantian and the hips, keeping the shoulders in line. We'll demonstrate that in other videos. The center line doesn't mean just the, the Du and Ren channel, which goes around sort of like the, you know, outside. Here's the conception vessel, the reverse coming up, the governing vessel. Um, Ren and Du, respectively, for the meridians. The center line is from the crown of your head to your perineum. Perineum is, and we're going to use some mature words here, so just so you know, uh, between the genitals and the anus. So it's the, the perineum, the lowest point of your body, of your torso, I should say. And it's sort of um, like the gateway between the upper and the lower. So if that's kind of locked and squeezed off, then you can't get flow from upper and lower, which is one of the reasons why when I teach, I'm, I'm super stickler for like the way the, the hips down are and the structure and the alignment between the feet and the ankles and the knees and the hips and the distances in terms of width and length. A lot of times you get people who are too wide and they can't move correctly and become double weighted. If they're too narrow, they don't have the balance. Or if something should happen and they have to move their leg, they're going to kick themselves. Or if another person does, you know, sweep or kick them, they kick themselves, as opposed to just kind of having that move and actually be able to use those Taiji principles with their legs. So Peng Lu Jian, so if Peng is ward off, roll back for Liu. Again, yielding and redirecting is sort of the main things with that. G would be press or squeeze, and this is going to be the sort of basis for when we're talking about chin-a, the seizing and locking and grabbing. 
So you see like, you know, we have Pong here, we have Ji here. So it has that, it's almost like you have a vice. You have the one thing here pressing and then you're, you know, with the vice, the um, screw joint or whatever, the, the arm squeezes it in. So you have pressing, locking, you know, when you have someone grab your wrist and you teach, press on that and then do the motion, that's squeezing, that's pressing. So this would be Ji Jing. An uh, is translated as push. Now, some of you might be saying, well, if on is push, how come you say tui shao, tui shou is push hands? Well, because tui and on are almost sort of different pushes. The way I've had it described to me, um, and I asked the same question because I was confused, it's always taught on is push. Uh, it confused me that, well, why isn't it on shou instead of tui shou? On is like pushing a car. So when you see grass bird's tail, there's the setup in and the long push out. So you get the 3D effect, pushing out. So it's almost like pushing a car. You know, you don't just sort of, you know, do this when you're pushing a car and anything like that, or, or you don't if you want to actually move it. This also, if you see this and like push hands things and people, the shoving matches, this is basically striking. It isn't appropriate. Uh, with that, it's just basically a bunch of punks trying to show how tough guy they are because they don't actually know how to use the skill. Uh, and I say that as someone who does judge tournaments and is a head judge for a local tournament every year, including with the Twee Show, and I'm almost always disappointed in a lot of ways. And then there comes a Twee Show, and I, I've told people straight out, if you're just going to try and thug it out, put on a jacket, Go get your butt kicked with with uh, Shui Zhou. It has no place here. Uh, the and but then as a caveat to that, the way American tournaments won Tri Show and the way maybe Chinese ones is a little bit different. Uh, some of the Chinese ones do actually have throws and and everything like that, but it still has to have appropriate Taiji technique to it, as opposed to just a couple hammer headed bags shoving each other in a bar. Wow, what was I saying? I blacked out for a minute. What happened? A little bit. Anyway, so on is almost that long pushing, long pushing. You have, uh, you're going through, deeply through. Uh, again, with BK Francis, it also talks about has a downward aspect too. And indeed, we do see when we're doing Yang style Taiji and you push before we go into it's usually single whip afterwards, there is a sink the palms. And there is downward energy with that as well. But Tui would be more like a sort of short, you know, we see, you know, that sort of push in with Chen style Taiji. There's the longer pushes as well, but you see this more, you know, coming out of lazy about tying the coat, come up past the shoulder, push, and then you get into that single whip. So that would be almost more, I tend to think of it, and this is me again, I tend to think of it more like Xingyi. So where it's like the, your opponent's here, you're here. With Xingyi, the idea is, oh, you're here, now I'm here. Whatever happens to you, I'll deal with after I sort of, while I kind of destroy you. So I kind of think, maybe not as harsh, but with Tui is, you're here, I'm here, now I'm here. And you still get the push through. Uh, I get that because that's how power is going to be given, not strength where it's just force. You know, you have speed and and the, the mass and that's force. That's different than power, at least the way I describe it. Again, a lot of these terms are coming from me and, and my perspective with it. So um, just to kind of keep going on the sort of introduction for Grass Bird's Tale again, we're going mostly Yang style. There are a couple other post, uh, postures, but styles that have, let's talk about grass bird's tail as well, uh, a little bit different. Later on in the sort of series, we'll be going over that, including the Beijing sort of 24 style, which is very similar to Yang style with a few changes. Uh, a little bit of tweaks this is one of the reasons why they call it a simplified style. And it does, uh, simplified does feel more sort of lighter and airier to me when I play it. Um, so first, one of the ones we're talking about, Fu Zhongwen's uh, Mastering Yang Style Taiji. He was a direct student of Yang Chen Fu, and Yang Chen Fu 
was the, I believe, the, you know, third generation Yang stylist from the Yang family after Yang Lusan learned Chen style and started adapting it. And Yang Chen Fu was the one who is responsible for Yang style looking like Yang style does now. So anything you look at or see or anything that's Yang style, it's appropriate Yang style that Yang Zandao, Yang Dun, and the family are promoting and everything like that. It's from Yang Cheng Fu. Um, so this is his student. And I'm going to try... A lot of these books are, you know, this is... Especially since there's four parts to it. For example, we're still flipping through. We have about 15 pages of just talking about it. I'm not going to go over every little thing with that. And we will be talking about the stepping with it as well. We'll review the stepping. So we're going to have the Taiji walking and the bow stances. I know I've done a Taiji walking video, and we'll kind of review bow stance with that too as we go. But there's, and I'll show you some of the pictures with it as he's stepping out. So we have the first sort of pung, and then moving into grass bird's tail here around figure seven. Now one of the things that we used to do with my teacher is that if we were stepping out with the left, we'd rock back, toe in, and just toe out the right foot and step out. We've since learned that you actually have to pull the leg in. Uh, and that has a variety of, of reasons, so we'll, we'll talk about that too. So I'm going to try and find the important points here, sort of important points. So turning by left and right, you have to use the weight, waist as axis. So in other words, we're not, this right here the, is the thoracic hinge, right? We're like the xiphoid process is, and it's another joint. And you can kind of collapse or lean back with it, open up the chest. You do that, you bring an energy up here. You want to keep the shoulders and the hips almost like a box. You don't, you want to keep rotating the box and that's going to be here with the hips and the waist. The body must remain vertically aligned and all this, what we're talking about for everything. There's like one thing I think in everything we do that I do that actually has where you're turning shoulders one way and the hips another way. Um, and that's from the Yi Jin Jing because it's actually trying to turn and twist and, and massage in with the liver. Um, but that's one thing with Qigong, which doesn't have the martial quality. And if you want the martial quality to be appropriate, the whole body's got to be in one thing for internals. One thing. So you're not... This is an internal. This is just your arm and, and force. You want to generate power, whole body, and includes the way you rotate. Soft and gradual, pace even. That was, I think... One of the things we have to thank Yang Chen Fu for is, is the sort of level, even pace of Yang style. Because uh, Chen, you know, will have the sort of obvious Fa Jing. You don't have to play it that way, but a lot of times you'll see it. Um, and some of the difference with the way the head is. It's still even, it's still relaxed, it's still unified. It's Tai Ji. Uh, but it's sort of a different perspective on how to play it. Um, no, no middle or, or, or beginning, middle or end. Again, it's sort of like almost introductory points. In other words, once you sort of move, you're moving. That's it. This is a general Taiji sort of thing. You know, if I step here and then go over, I've cut my energy. This isn't fluid. It doesn't have the same, the silk reeling aspects. It's not round. It's not fluid. You broke it. You cut the circuit. So it's got to keep moving. So when you see grass bird's tail, grass sparrow's tail, it almost has like waves coming in. And it's constant. At no point does the ocean just sort of... And if it does, we're in trouble. So when you step, you move like a cat walking. So in other words, again, there's a certain lightness and agility. You do not move, and we'll talk about this later too, you do not move the leg while there's weight in it. That's, that's double-weighted, not standing in the middle, because that's one of the five steppings, forward, back, left, right, 
center. It's one of the five steppings. As a side note, another little caveat, if you ever see anyone who said they made up their own Taiji and they're just, you know, some other thing, and all they basically did was take their routines, their kata or whatever, and slow it down, this isn't Taiji. It's not. Taiji is the eight energies and the five steppings in various combinations together. If it doesn't have that, it's not Taiji. So if you get some, some bruh going, in, oh yeah, yeah, I'm badass, and me, 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 martial arts, yeah, I took a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah, I made my own Tai Chi too. Yeah, I'm, I'm really like, you know, spiritually enhanced like that, you know, because it's, it's better, you know, it's really good for like beating people up and man, I'm really getting my mind together and stuff. No, if it doesn't have eight energies, five methods of stepping, it is definitively not Tai Chi. Not saying other people might not be able to create their own internal martial arts. Not saying people don't have that skill, that wherewithal, that training, or anything else like that. But if they want it to be Taiji Chuan or blah blah blah, Taiji or Taiji, blah blah blah, however they want to do it, it has to incorporate those 13 things. It has to. Or it's definitively not correct. You know, if I say, well, I made up my own English, but I'm still speaking four other languages none of which are English, it's not really my own English. So I uh, also want to make sure when the white, right arm is warding off, it must be even with the shoulder. It can't incline high or low. So we're talking about here. See, in line with the shoulder. If we're too low, we're going to start collapsing. If we're too high, we might start engaging that shoulder too much separating that arm, I can kind of see it on the screen, kind of separating that arm from the rest of the body. When warding off, the shoulder joint should not protrude forward. Take as a standard the body moving forward vertically aligned, yet with the knees covering but not going beyond the toes at the same time, the body may not bend forward. Now there might be a slight, as you can see with this picture, see how from his shoulder to the heel, has that nice little kind of 45 with that. Simplified is going to have it where, you know, this would be more back a little bit, where it's more straight like this. Even with that slight angle, it's still vertically aligned. And it's still vertically in line. And the Yangs will actually talk about almost like using a cane. Or I sometimes will think about it in terms of the way you have you're, you, you can build support in with the building. You're still staying aligned. Your body's still aligned. Everything's still where it is. And that sinking with the quant in with the hips and lower is going to help maintain. Because if you're too high with that, then yeah, you are kind of bending over. If you can sink, everything lines up in there. Uh, so we're also talking about everything must go forward together naturally, not early, not late. So again, the unification of movement, upper and lower follow each other. Changing in the process of changing movements, one must observe keeping the body centered and aligned. So again, you know, I'm not going to be here with my arms and my chest forward and my arms over here and just sort of doing one of these. It's the whole thing moving through as we go. When so we're talking that was mostly the pung part when we're talking about Liu, the roll back. Performing roll back, arms must follow the waist, but the insides of the two upper arms must also not come close to the ribs. You don't want to collapse. Again, that's part of the almost sort of still having pung in with that too, and there's a little bit of inflation. Uh, and we'll talk about these things too. Grandmaster Hu would always talk about, you know, if one energy or two energies is okay, makes the threes better. Um, so pung's going to kind of sneak in there a little bit everywhere. Sinking the shoulders starts an action that protects the flanks, but the armpits must retain a gap that would approximately contain a fist. I'm always doing that with my students. They're kind of in here or out here with that. Take the fist, hold it in. Oh, it fits kind of in there without it being crushed or without it, you know, kind of falling out. All movements of the form should be this way in order to avoid having your body restrained. Too tight, you can be picked up overpowered easily, anything else like that, because you're separating different things out like your arms as opposed to having, again, the one unity. 
two collapsed, obvious. So again, vertically aligned, not leaning forward or back, not early or late, upper, lower following. In the process of doing the rollback movement because of the turning of the palms, sinking of the elbows and the sitting back onto the solid leg, it appears as if the two palms are lowering. Actually, the two palms in no sense intentionally roll back downward. So this is one of the things that was changed when you see Simplify, because Simplify does almost have, there is a point in Young style where it almost has kind of like, you know, you stroke the long beard kind of thing. And it has it, but it uses that for Liu. Not so with proper uh, Yang style. It does kind of have a little bit of a, it looks like it, it looks like it's going to do that, but it doesn't. This point also applies to the prescribed method of Peng Li Jian. The four postures of fixed up push hands. So again, practicing push hands, just this one posture. Uh, therein, Liu, uh, in like manner, is only performed towards sides. There is definitely no downward action. Therefore, whenever there is a case of Liu being done to the sides in a downward direction, this is incorrect, for it will be out of conformance with the requirements of push hands. There is an energy for pulling downward. Okay. Or Kai. And again, I'm just going to, as a little side thing here, I'm very sorry uh, when I mutilate uh, the beautiful Chinese language. I'm doing my best uh, with it. So if I'm doing these things inappropriately, I apologize. During rollback, the left arm loosely holds the ward off posture. While in the process of rolling back, the two hands must maintain the same distance as they would in performing rollback and push hands. They must precisely must be precisely, I apologize, consistent in having one hand adhere to the opponent's wrist joint, one hand adhering to the upper arm near the elbow, while drawing them in. Make the change in the distance of the hands and consistent with this without drawing them too far apart. This is called mutual interaction of the upper arms. Uh, I'll try and get some people in and kind of show some of the distances with the arms and that too in this playlist. So we have Peng, we have Lu, we have now Ji. Uh, same thing as before with the uh, alignments. And, uh, but one kind of thing with this too, and again, it's pressing, it's squeezing. You can have anything between the trapping, the locking, and kind of launching with it as well. Some of those things you might have seen. One of the important points with this after issuing the press, the space between the left palm and the pulse gate of the right wrist should seem near, but not near. So in other words, we're not doing this. We're not actually, when we're playing the routine, we're playing the postures, you're not doing this. You're not touching. It's going to be here. So to hold, press in, and come forward, but not that. We're not doing that. You'll see that a lot. When people aren't paying attention. So again, well now we're going on to on some important points. The two palms wiping back should follow the claw as it sits back. Loosen the shoulders. Do not allow the elbows to stick out. So when we're pulling in, we're not pulling in like this and having weird alignments like that. We pull in. There's still the sitting. Again, this will be more illustrated once it's kind of whole body. This is just sort of important points to think about introduction. The two palms must follow the center of gravity, shifting forward, then push out, manifesting in a slight upward curving arc. The degree of rise and fall should not be great. The two arms and shoulders must not become tense or rise up. The elbows exert no strength in extending. The body must not bend forward or lean back. One of the things you see, again, from the simplified stuff, bleeding in, is this big sort of wave with that. Mm-mm. We come in, slight come down, so it's almost like shoulder finger height, fingers, and then there's the upwards. So now we have shoulder, wrist aligned again. So no big thing like that. Not with Yang style, at least. 
When the palms have not yet finished fourth, the left palm is inclined to the right side, the right palm inclined to the left side. So we're not flat palming it. We're using this sort of this sort of meat end here. That's what they mean. So instead of we're not doing this, we're not doing that or that, it's here. You can also feel how relaxed it makes and helps the elbow sink. Two palms, however, must not turn to the point where they are facing squarely forward. Uh, or we talked about that. Okay, so I'm going to again, I'm going to kind of spare you the other sort of 20 pages of this here for the moment. So just a quick other thing we're talking about now. Uh, specific kind of writings of Yang Chen Fu, the essence and application of Tai Chi Chuan. Yang Chen Fu calls Grass Barrel's Tale the chief hand method of Tai Chi Chuan's essence and application. So it's the sort of, if you learn no other one, or learn no other one well, if you learn this well, your understanding of Tai Chi will be maybe better than other people who just sort of learn a bunch of stuff but don't get into any of the meat of anything. So, you know, what the, the whole thing Bruce Lee would talk about is I don't fear the man with 10,000 kicks. I fear the man who's practiced the one kick 10,000 times. Uh, so we have the adhere, connect, stick, and follow of push hands going back and forth without separating or severing the connection. Uh, I might make other references to sort of electric circuits especially when I went over the breathing in that video, tongue behind the teeth at the roof of the mouth, creating that circuit with the Ren and Du channels, the microcosmic orbit, uh, completing everything through the body. So it has, again, all four methods. And he's kind of just talking about how different ways he can kind of use it in some things. So I'm just, again, I'm kind of trying to save this. I have read these and, and went over before, uh, but I'm looking at the time and I'm noticing that, okay, what might be, I want to do, I'm going to kind of spare you with that. So he's talking about more with the other ones, but I wanted to make sure that we kind of got the importance of where even the Yangs think about grass bird's tail. Uh, so what we're going to do, last thing here, is smell my book, because I do that. Taiji Touchstones, Yang Family Secret Transmissions is sort of a compilation of different things. I think when I got it, it was out of print. I don't know. I used to work at a bookstore at Borders umpteen years ago for about umpteen other years. Um, so sometimes I could kind of, oh, look at what I found, order um, with that. So he's talking about, and this is, uh, apparently these are Songs of the Eight Ways. And these are attributed to Tan Meng Xian. Uh, it does have pictures with Yang Shen Fu in this, but I just want to kind of help illustrate the the four sort of cardinal jing for our cardinal energies, Peng Li Jian. So the song of ward off. How can we explain the energy of ward off? It is like water which supports a moving boat. First we make the qi and the dantian substantial, then hold the head as if suspended from above. The whole body has the power of a spring. Opening and closing should be clearly defined. Even if the opponent uses a thousand pounds of force, we will float lightly and without difficulty. So again, we're trying to sort of talking about the giant ants. Uh, the idea of, you know, uh, four ounces deflects a thousand pounds. The idea of floating on the water. So the upper body is floating on the lower. We're not having it where I'm, I have this tense and support. No, it's relaxed and supported. Song of rollback. How can we explain the energy of rollback? We draw the opponent towards us by allowing him to advance, yielding. While we follow his incoming force, continuing to draw him until he overextends himself, we remain light and comfortable. 
without losing our vertical posture. When his force is spent, he will be naturally be empty. While we maintain our center of gravity, we can never be bested by the opponent. So you're yielding to it. You're not going force against force. Uh, I'm, I'm generally sort of little in this day and age. I'm like six foot and, you know, I'm not that heavy. I'm kind of skinny, scrawny kind of guy. I'm not going to overpower a lot of people. It's, it's not going to happen. But if I can yield, they come in strong and I get out of the way, still maintaining connection, still maintaining slightly moving things out of the way and when he's spent that's when i can go in that's why we have the yin yang symbol when yang is at its absolute peak and is on about to be coming now lower yin starts and vice versa so you have that cycle uh, i've heard stories i don't know how anecdotal they are uh, i don't necessarily want to have practical experience with this to be honest with you but there are stories of even just blades of grass uh, changing the the vector of like machine gun rounds. So just a little bit of can change something coming in. So the force can be changed by just sort of yielding and then learning to redirect. The song of press. Sometimes we use two sides to directly receive a single intention, meeting and combining in one movement. We indirectly receive the force of the reaction. This is like a ball bouncing off a wall or a coin dropped on a drum, which bounces up with metallic sound. So it has a hit but a balance, too. When you hit, it kind of goes, you, know, you throw a ball against a wall. If it hits, it kind of does have the kind of thing, but it shoots out as well. So you have those two those two sort of complementary forces with that as well. They meet and combine. There's almost a, a level of somewhat of neutralization in with there too a little bit, I, I tend to feel. Push now, on. When applied, it is like water in motion, but within its softness there is great strength. When the flow is swift, the force cannot be withstood. Meeting high places, the waves break over them, and encountering low places, they dive deep. The waves rise and fall, and finding a hole, they will surely surge in. Uh, so we have some of the other energies in here as well, as well as the steppings, um, which I won't get into right now. So the idea is, and this is some of the thing that I've noticed with my push hands, is that idea of that sort of like water coming down, where am I going, where am I going, oh, found a place in, boom. So sometimes with push, you got someone in, you're in, oh, you're kind of giving little tests, little tests, little test. oh, I found a spot, you found a little hollow, you found it in, and that's when you can <laughs> exploit it and come through. So a uh, somewhat long-winded uh, uh, talk about grass bird's tail and breaking down the four sort of cardinal energies within them uh, on top of and sort of expanding on the other talk I gave about the eight energies, sort of a brief overview with that. So I'll be continuing on uh, breaking down grass bird's tail in its two sort of component parts and then putting them together. I will, uh, we're going to talk about the three planes of circles and then get into sort of hold the ball uh, start uh, both of those also then with stepping combining all that together and then starting to show the four individual parts of grass bird's tail putting them together and then kind of working both sides I do still have that sort of algebraic idea of symmetry of what you do to one side you should be able to do to the other uh, so, for example, when I do the 13 or the 16 posture routines from Yang style, I'll play the mirror side as well. So I play the 13 going the normal way, and then when I get done, I play the mirror style for both of those. Because I genuinely do think that what you do on one side, you should be able to do on the other. Helps sort of balance out whatever's going on in my brain, uh, or whatever things are going on in my brain, uh, as well as you just don't know what 
situation you're going to encounter. Uh, hopefully just with sort of safe managed push hands or sparring or if you do grappling or wrestling or, you know, uh, Sancho, Sanda sort of kickboxing or Swaijo or Jiu-Jitsu, whatever. Hopefully safe places like that and not sort of, oh, look, it's a bar, street fight sort of thing because those aren't, those aren't good. No, on a, on a lot of levels, especially since now we're talking about being American, so you know what the other things are involved with that. And no judgment with it, but it is something that you do have to pay attention to and be mindful of. Um, and also, one of the things I'll stress when we, you know, martial artists, every day is leg day. You're always practicing with the legs, or you should be. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is so when you clear out whatever you have to clear out, like force so you don't get some sort of messed up uh, assault charge as opposed to self-defense you can run the hell away again speaking from some experience of my own and sometimes I can't at work uh, but in general is talking to Americans in America run the hell away it's not worth it it's not worth it uh, so and that's one of the things now we're talking into using Taiji as a way of life, getting it into be a, a, not even beyond a daily routine, it's a lifestyle. It's now the way that you start to think, the way you start to feel, the way your body starts holding itself, more than just, I play Taiji like this. No, it's even the way you think, too. So sometimes even the way you talk to people, you have to, redirect you have to yield you know you, you have to be able to stay adaptive if someone's coming at you really strong you don't go at them really strong because that's not going to do anything but then again if someone's really sort of uber passive sometimes you got to kind of charge up and <laughs> in through because that everyone becoming passive nothing works and i know if, again from my own experience with you know push hands or swai jiao or sparring or anything else like that it doesn't do you can't just always play defense either sometimes it has to be a little bit of an offense even if you know it's just keeping someone off of you or keeping someone away from you or something like that sometimes you got to do that too and uh we'll try and illustrate that as we talk more about grass sparrows or grass bird's tail as well so thank you for hanging in there and we will see you shortly <laughs>